Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brainbean here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at another Drevo keyboard. Now this one is their newest mechanical keyboard that they've released and it is a more budget friendly keyboard and I am going to be doing a giveaway for this one as well. I'll have a link located down in the description below, but just based on how much the Blade Master surprised me with its quality, I'm expecting a lot and really excited to see what the Durandal has to offer. So let's go ahead and take a look at this keyboard. Starting as always with construction and design, the Drevo Durandal is a 104 key mechanical keyboard with an exposed switch design. It's made up of an anodized aluminum top panel over a plastic casing. Despite the metal construction, the Durandal is surprisingly light. Weight aside, the board itself feels solidly built and does offer some flex when really mashing down on the board. Aesthetically, the board is fairly simple, although I'm not really a fan of the slope at the top of the board. It kind of looks like a cheesy spoiler. The LED indicators are also a little bit tacky with the large white labels that I just find a little bit too in your face. The Durandal comes with an attached wrist rest that's unfortunately not removable. This does make the wrist rest feel really solid, however I much prefer the option to remove the wrist rest especially when it's not padded. The Durandal's wrist rest is made of plastic, but it does have an ergonomic groove molded into it. Depending on your hand size, I feel like your comfort here may vary. Also, if you have long fingers, you may just find that your wrist is resting on the desk anyways as it doesn't come out towards the user very far. The Durandal uses Altimu switches, which are one of my favorite budget-friendly mechanical switch. This board is offered in clicky blue, tactile brown, linear red, and the heavier linear black switches. I always appreciate it when a keyboard comes in a variety of options as it ensures that most users will get the switch type that they prefer. As for the Altimu switches themselves, for the price, I find them to be pretty good. They do have a fair amount of key wobble, but I find that to be pretty forgivable when you consider the smoothness of the action of the switch. I've also used all of the different Altimu switches out there, and I can tell you that they've all equally impressed me with their feel when you consider their low price tag. I'll give you guys a quick sound test of the red switches, but I'll leave a link down below to my sound test comparison if you want to hear all of the other varieties as well. The Drevo Durandal comes with full per-key RGB illumination and is controlled by their power console software, which, if you'll remember, gave me a little bit of trouble during my review of the Blade Master, but interestingly enough, worked just fine with this keyboard. Drevo offers a great selection of presets and gives you the ability to save up to three custom profiles. You can also use the software to create custom macros as well. The only real negative I have to say about the lighting is that the Outimo RGB switches aren't that bright. At 100% brightness, I'd say they're about half as bright as cherry switches. Still, in a low light setting, they're pretty bright and will give you the full desired effect. I also like that the Altimu RGB switches, much like the Kale and Cherry switches, come with clear switch bodies, which gives you a nice soft underglow and does look pretty neat when looking at the board across the room. The keycaps on the Durandal are made of double shot ABS plastic and have a mildly stylized font that for the most part looks pretty good, while a few of the keycaps do look a little bit muddy when there's more than three characters or so. All of the secondary characters are illuminated minus the function row. The spacebar has a Drevo logo in it, but it's not translucent so the light can't shine through. The underside of the keyboard has seven rubberized pads and two rubberized extendable legs to keep the keyboard in place during use. There's also a three channel cable routing management system integrated into the bottom of the board to help keep the cables a little bit cleaner on your desk. It's a nice touch that you don't normally see on budget keyboards such as this. Now speaking of the cable, they did choose to go with a simple rubber cable. While not uncommon at this price point, I always appreciate seeing a little bit more durable braided cable, but at the same time, if you don't plan on moving the keyboard around that much, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. As for extras, the Durandal doesn't really have a whole lot to speak of. It does have end key rollover and you get the obligatory keycap puller, which in my mind really should come with any mechanical keyboard. The board does not include any dedicated macro or media keys, but it does give you media controls by way of the function key. 
Considering the price tag of 65 bucks, it starts to become easier to overlook some of the keyboard's shortcomings. The non-removable wrist rest is my biggest complaint. Even if it was just fixed with screws and took a little bit more work, it would still be better than not giving us the option to remove it at all. But per key RGB illumination on a mechanical keyboard with tons of switch options at this price point is just insane and would be a much better choice than any of the other big brands membrane keyboards that go for upwards of 80 bucks. This keyboard isn't perfect, but for a budget-friendly RGB mechanical keyboard, it just might be the best option that I've seen yet. Well, that's it for the video, guys. Like I mentioned, I do have that link for the giveaway located down in the description below. And while you're down there, be sure to leave me a comment and let me know what you think about this keyboard. Of course, you can give this video a like if you enjoyed it to show your support. And if you're new here, I'd love to see you subscribe because I've got a lot more videos like this coming for you in the near future. And of course, you can always follow me on Twitter at BrainBeanGaming to stay up to date with what's going on with the channel, as well as see those giveaway winners updated in real time so you can keep track of where those are at. But with that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.